So now, how did I study for anatomy, right? So we've spoken about the textbooks that I used, but now how did I study for anatomy? In all honesty, guys, anatomy was quite tricky. It was, I loved it. I really, really, really loved anatomy, but it took me a very long time to find a study method that worked for me. And um, I think the reason for that was because uh, we tested in many different ways. So we had an MCQ, we had a long, um, I like the written one where you have to like write long answers and then we had a spot exam. So with every single test, your study method had, a, had to sort of change. You had to study a different way in order for you to be able to fully answer or be able to fully do well in um, that specific test, right? So in the first, um, I think the first block or the first semester, no, the first block, we had an MCQ test. And for that, basically, I just made sure that I understood where things were. Like I... I made sure that I went through all of my lecture slides. Like I attended all my lectures. Like that's just me. I attended all of my lectures. Um, this was obviously before Corona, you know, before it happened. I used to attend all of my lectures. Second thing that I used to do is that after that, I would use my lectures and start using the lectures and the textbooks, right? So I'd use those and basically start learning and sort of trying to understand what's what, like trying to understand where is that thing that if you're saying that there is a pick major, pick minor, where is that? look at them at my macmins to see where exactly that is and then after that i'd also just test myself if i needed to make like drawings of specific things i'd do that but it wasn't very often in anatomy um but that's what i do initially like for the mcq stuff mcq stuff i just use my lecture slides and use netta's anatomy and then what i end up doing for my um what's this for my mcq preparation or mcq preparation sorry was that i used my netta's a lot because what it forced me to do was to be able to sort of identify where things are, know their relations, and be able to sort of explain something without reading it. And if I looked at a picture in the Netus Atlas, I'd have to say, okay, the artery lies medial to this, this, this. It lies lateral or inferior superior to that. Looking at the borders of the triangle, this is, this is, this is that. So I spent a lot of time um, learning from my MCQ stuff from the Netus um, Atlas by looking at those things and learning the relations, the bones, how do they turn, which part of the bone do I need to know, what attaches there, where does it originate, things like that from that. So I literally learned um, using my lecture slides and I used my netters and then in some instances if I couldn't really visualize what I was going on I'd watch videos where they show how the muscles work so that's very important to know how the muscles work so that you don't really have to um like cram right so if you understand how like where the muscle originates and where it attaches you're able to sort of visualize yourself is this a b duction and a deduction knowing that it comes from there is it going to pull it back like that or is it going to pull it back like that right so you don't have to cram those things if you understand it that's how you'll be able to answer the question in the exam so that's how i focused on um, anatomy i didn't focus so much on like reading paragraphs upon paragraphs but i focused a lot on making sure that i understood what i was reading literally reading the lecture slides going back to my netters or videos and then um that was it like that's how i basically did anatomy um i didn't make notes for anatomy simply because like i'm saying guys i didn't focus a lot on the writing i didn't focus a lot on that but this was for mcqs i didn't focus a lot on writing 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 stuff it was basically just being able to see what's what so for mcqs and for my spot exam that's how i prepared for anatomy i didn't write a lot i'd use my lecture slides and the netters and videos as I said right and then um yeah so embryo as well I'd use like um I'd use summaries and watch a lot a lot of videos of embryology histology that's where I would use the lecture slides use a textbook and then yeah just sort of try to understand and recite I didn't necessarily watch videos for histology or anything like that I couldn't find nice videos so yeah that's what I did for um histology embryology and grass anatomy and yeah, that sort of helped me. But now when it came to the long questions, like the long, the exam where we had to write like paragraphs explaining, that's where I spent a lot more time trying to understand um, the in-depth knowledge of whatever, like if for example, I'm studying the heart, I need to be able to understand how does it function? How does it pump? Like, you know, th those sort of things. Those are things that I did. Um, so that's where I put in a lot more time in reading and trying to understand how does something function, um, how, do, how is it divided, what are the borders. But because I really like, I'm able to visualize it, explaining it becomes better. Like I didn't spend as much time reading because I'm able to visualize that sort of thing. So when I had to explain it in a paragraph form, it became easier because I can like see it. Guys, you know? I feel like I've spoken a lot about anatomy now, like I've been going on. So now I'm going to go on to molecular medicine, which I absolutely loved. Like I literally 
love molecular medicine and um the reason i loved it is that it was just such a very interesting um sort of course or subject for me what basically molecular medicine was was basically the study of um like diseases or the human body but like on a molecular level right um you're basically studying how for example cancers come about so you need to know that the person has a genetic mutation and that mutation predisposes them to getting a cancer you need to know how hiv works that the receptors are binding to that receptor like it was just so interesting to study um illnesses that we know today and understand today but now understanding how they come about and at a molecular level for me that was really 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 cool i loved it it was so like mind-boggling like what that happened is that how the cancer came about oh my god you know like it was just so amazing like i literally just loved it let's talk about how i actually actually studied molecular medicine right so the thing about molecular medicine that um a lot of people tend to struggle with molecular medicine or what i've sort of realized when i was in second year and like afterwards is that people struggle with molecular medicine because it's not very easy to understand or visualize what's actually happening like you have to think about dna's about cells about all those things like this dna broke there there was a translocation a transcription or whatever, whatever so it's not things that you can see like right here with the naked eye it requires you to be able to sort of tap into a different world or tap into a different understanding of things in order for you to be able to sort of understand and like be able to answer questions that they given like they give you right and that's where most people sort of now start not liking molecular medicine because it it requires you to put in the effort to understand what's going on it's not just so obvious if they're like this is an eye like you can see that's an eye you know but like if they're like there was a translocation of the uh, cd whatever whatever there was a translocation of cag you need to think okay wait translocation okay so that cell moved or not the cell but like the dna whatever is okay it moved from that part to that part but if it moves from that part to that part it means that we're shifting that and so you see it's a lot of like thinking and sort of trying to visualize something that you can't necessarily see with your own naked eye so that's what um makes it a bit tricky and makes it quite challenging but it is i found it to not be horrible as such um i just made sure that i paid a lot of attention to what the lecturers were emphasizing so there were some topics that they literally like spend a lot of time trying to make sure that you guys understand and from that i was like okay that's very important for exam purposes because you're spending way too much time explaining to me this concept you know so i i, I attended the lectures used the lecture slides and then the other thing is that i made like diagrams drawings and all those things for moment like i literally had like posters in my room when i was in second year like posters everywhere of like the signaling pathways and things like that because those are things that are very 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 important in molecular medicine if you understand the signaling pathways you basically are good for for like not that you you done with moment but you've saved yourself a lot of time uh, trying to relearn those things um in the other um semesters or blocks and also in your future because even when we're in third year and fourth year we still use those signaling pathways that we learned in second year so those those certain things that i sort of made sure that um i understood very well from the get-go so that going forward i didn't have to spend as much time revising those things again and again and again and again and they love signaling pathways in the exams they will literally bring them up like this so you know that if you study those things and you understand them then you like getting a better like you have a better chance of doing well in the exam because you know understand and you can answer the questions so don't sleep on those things spend time knowing your signaling pathways like literally spend time understanding them be able to say them yourself this starts from there seven spinning membrane wind pathway binds to that we need a cofactor that co like literally love it like just just love it even if you don't pretend that you do love it so that you can get through and you can get the marks that you want to get like literally just pretend that it is the most like it's your favorite thing in the world and yeah so that was moment and then yeah the other thing about molecular medicine like i said lecture lecture slides um i drawings that's what i did I, I did a lot of pictures and then i also attended like the adps adps are like extra tats and stuff uh so they used to give us like questions that we had to do for the adps so i'd always do those things i'd do the adps beforehand and then when i got there if there was something i didn't understand i'd always make sure that i ask so I, by the time like it was exam time i had already had like 
um, encountered or engaged with the information at least four times from the lecture when I did lecture, lecture slides myself, when I made the drawings, when I went to the ADPs or PSEs. Those are like things that really, really helped me. I didn't have to study as much because I basically interacted with the material a lot before the exam itself. So I didn't wait for like exam period to start studying for molecular medicine. I engaged a lot with the information. And then um, when, the exam period t uh, when the exam time came, I didn't like have to do a lot as like as much um so yeah and past papers for moment are very very important they love repeating questions a moment so you do the past papers like literally your mcqs do those like literally do them give yourself a day or two just doing past papers and you'll see you'll literally feel like these people just didn't even spend time making those questions because they love repeating question paper i mean questions from past question papers so go as far as back as like 2011 if you can like start from the back going forward so that um you have a better chance of having done something that they're gonna ask so yeah that was more made for me i know i said a lot but i just want people to sort of like molecular medicine so just give yourself time don't be scared don't go into moment thinking oh my gosh i'm gonna fail cancer you're not gonna fail cancer it's tricky but it, like you can literally do well in that exam and then the last um the last thing that we're going to talk about now in terms of like the courses well subjects in second year is human physiology so the thing about physiology guys is that there are a lot of resources that can help you with physiology there are a lot and now the trap that a lot of us fall into is that because physiology we don't have as many exams like or tests throughout the year it becomes very easy to let it slide and let things pile up because you know that you're not going to be examined at the end of four weeks or whatever. So it's like, oh, I can focus on all the other things and then forget about physiology. But now the trap comes in is that with physiology, um, they're quite strict on how they want you guys to answer their questions, right? So if you don't spend a lot of time trying to figure out or trying or learning the information and um, you, ba you basically have a gist of like, the topic that you're studying you're not going to do well when it comes to physiology and you have to answer the long questions or like the mcqs because they're very specific about what they want you to know what they want you to mention when you're answering your long questions so if you don't spend a lot of time studying making sure that you understand properly the processes or the whatever they're teaching you it becomes quite challenging to actually answer the questions so with physiology there's also a resource called equip well we had it when i was in second year i don't know if you guys still have it um, with Equip, uh, what, what it is basically is that um, it's like a online platform that allows you to do like MCQs, you have to test yourself and then yeah, you test yourself, you see if you got it right or wrong and they tell you if it's right, if it's wrong and why it's right or wrong. Use those things like because with physiology, you don't get tested so often, do Equip like literally like as the year is going by yeah just make sure that you're always doing equip to check in on yourself to see okay do i know this topic do i not and i'll tell you how much you got at the end of that thing so if you can see like your body fluids you're not doing well you you need to go study those body fluids because you know so that's physiology it was really nice it was a nice like subject but i didn't spend a lot of time like studying it and of like all of my subjects in second year it was one that i i think it was one that i didn't get your yeah, distinction or like i didn't do well in it um, but I passed and I exempted all of my subjects in second year, but physiology wasn't my best. And funny enough, I actually majored in physiology in third year <laughs> because I felt like I needed to redeem myself. I was like, it's such a nice subject, but I didn't give it enough time. And that's, that was like my biggest downfall in second year when it came to physiology. So yeah, physiology, attend the lectures, use the lecture slides, use the textbook if you can. There are lots and lots and lots and lots of videos online for physiology so literally google i mean or youtube your, your way um into physiology like literally learn it love it do past papers past papers are very very important for physiology because of past papers you get to see what do they actually want you to know from the topic that they're teaching you and how do they want you to answer so get past papers with memos and see how they want you to answer those things because when you start to realize how they want you to answer, it also helps you know how to study the information that you're being taught because there's a specific way that they want you to answer the questions. If you don't answer them, answer them in that way, then you're not going to get the full marks that they want. So yeah, that's physiology. I don't know if you guys have any questions regarding um, anatomy, physiology, and MOMED as like the, the, the subjects or the courses that I've mentioned now. If you guys have any questions on those courses, 
drop them now in the comment section below before we just get into general second year advice and how to conquer it and everything second year mental health friendships going out all of that jazz so before we end off our video on how to conquer and pass second year um i just want to talk briefly about just second year as a whole and how it is right so guys second year is a lot second year is quite challenging i must say um especially from first year it's such a huge jump in terms of the work that you're expected to know like the kind of information that you're expected to know and the amount of information that you're expected to know right um and it can get very 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 overwhelming um i know like in second year i was just literally overwhelmed majority of the time right um but now with second year i think what's very important as i've said be very honest with yourself as i said in the beginning be honest know when you're not doing well and know when to seek help literally make sure that you seek help in second year or else like it's gonna be very difficult to get through so get a tutor i had a tutor for all of my subjects in second year not because i i didn't understand the work or because i felt like you know what um i don't know i just had a tutor because the with a tutor um what they help you with is that they have been through this before they know what are the things that you should be focusing on they know how you should be studying or they can best advise you how to study a certain topic so with that i spent far less time trying to figure out how to learn that information because i had a tutor who told me okay this is how you study for this thing this is what I, these are the things that you need to know so get help in terms of a tutor or like you go to academic advisors they can give you help regarding how to approach second year and you will you will you will do well so another thing is that know what you're aiming for in second year like every like everyone has different goals for second year some people just want to pass some people want to exempt some people want to get distinctions so know what your goals are if you want to pass that's okay if you just want to get a 50 for everything and pass that's perfectly fine don't let other people's goals be your goals know what your goals are if you want to get a distinction and that is also okay like don't be shy about it it is very much possible to get distinctions in second year you're gonna have to work but it's possible right so be very honest with yourself about what your goals are what you want for second year and what you're willing to do or the effort or the amount of time you're willing to put in to get to those goals the other thing that i want to talk about regarding second year is literally is mental health um guys mental health in second year your take care of your mental health in second year um i know for me i spent a lot of time studying in second year like it was quite unhealthy if i can put it like that um so i had like the goals of getting like distinctions and stuff and i ended up spending like literally 99.9 .9 percent of my time studying like that's literally all i did okay i studied went to church and studied that's all i did in second year and now looking back at it that wasn't healthy in as much as i got the distinctions and i was able to get through and be happy you know get the averages that i wanted it wasn't healthy i didn't take time out to breathe to be with people be with my friends and at some point i neglect like my own health just because i needed to make sure that i studied you know so if i felt sick i was like oh no i'm not taking a day off i need to study like there's no way but that wasn't healthy so my advice look after yourself in second year make sure that in as much as you study and you're also taking time out for yourself you're taking time out to be with your friends with your family make sure that you have that support structure because you're gonna need it so don't neglect your support structure take time out for yourself make sure that you're okay literally take an hour out just watching whatever you're watching are you watching the queen uzalo scheme some whatever it might be some series something to take your mind off school and then go back to it right and now just um touching on second year um i know some people are going to second year scared of failing right you scared that oh my god i'm i'm gonna fail second year what if i fail second year and that's okay it's literally very normal to feel like that it's normal to be scared about failing the year failing anatomy or molecular medicine or whatever it might be that's perfectly normal now what i what i what i would encourage you to not allow to happen is for you to let that fear basically get in the way of you actually studying and actually getting the work done because what happens is that sometimes people get scared um they get scared about like second year that it literally cripples them and they can't study and they can't literally do anything right and now when you fail your first test after being so anxious and so scared it just goes downhill from there so it's okay to be feel to feel scared it's okay to be anxious about second year but always make sure that you're still able to work if you're unable to be to be working if not able to work and it's crippling you seek help 
go to the psychologist at school so that they can help you process and go through second year because it's quite challenging so seek help guys it's possible if you're enjoying second year that is also great if you are like it's great um yeah i i i think i enjoyed it i really did but like in like an unhealthy way but like i really really loved second year and yeah it was quite challenging if you get through second year then you'll be more than okay like for life <laughs> i think i don't know i'm still like going in the process so i don't know but yeah guys if you have any questions about second year please drop them down in the comment section below if there's anything that has helped you when you were in second year or even right now as you're in second year something that you feel like is helping right now uh drop it down in the comment section below right there so we can discuss and we can help other people get further and get the marks that they want to get get the distinctions that they want to get and yeah anyway um that's it from me regarding second year and how to pass second year how to get distinctions in second year what i did um in second year to get the marks that i got and how i managed to maneuver that uh, thank you guys so much for joining me on my journey to becoming dr matapo um please don't forget to like and subscribe and share this on my social media follow me on my social media platforms and yeah guys as always let's keep the love flowing let's keep the channel growing i'll see you guys next time